I'm going to go ahead and show you how to set up your Windows 10 environment. Um, should work the same for Windows 7 to develop Lewis scripts for OpenTX 2.21. I'm using a Tyrannus X90 Plus, but um, as far as the environment setup should be the same. I won't go into how to flash the firmware um, or how to get everything all set up as other videos do that better than I do, so I'll just get started from there. So this video assumes that you have to rent your remote with 2.20 software as well as the OpenTX 2.21. You can download the companion software from their website. Um, just go down to the downloads. I'll link that script in the, um, that link in the description below. Go ahead and download it and once you download it and open it up, um, go ahead and connect your remote. So turn on your remote. Plug in to your computer and when you do you should be prompt um, for joystick or storage, go ahead and put it into storage mode. And once it's in storage mode, you should be you should see it mounted um, in your devices. So we see it mounted here as USB E. Go into the drive that has all the files. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to basically want to copy these to a local folder. Um, I created a folder called Tyrannus. It's just on my desktop and I have a folder 2.2. I have a 2.1 as well but that was prior when I was running 2.1 software. And in this folder that you create 2.2 or whatever you want to call it, go ahead and copy the contents of your remote to this location. Once you have those copied over, go to settings and then go to settings again and your edit settings uh, dialog box will pop open and here where it's other settings SD structure path go ahead and click on select folder it's going to open another dialog box and navigate to the folder that you created and you dropped all those files on from the remote <clears throat> you can see here 2.2 I already have it selected um, and when you have it selected, it should show up at the bottom where it says folders. So I'll just go back, go back into it so you can see it's now selected at the bottom. Select folder and your path should now be there. Go ahead and hit OK. Then you're going to want to go ahead and click on read models and settings from radio. This will load all the models from your remote. And once that is loaded, you can now go ahead and turn off your remote and unplug it from the computer. That way you can save some battery. So everything that is going to be done up, um, from here on out is going to be from the temporary location that you created and loaded. Go ahead and click on a model and click on simulate radio. It's going to turn on as though it was a real actual radio. Turning off some switches that I have set up or else it'll be complaining. On the left here, you'll see some buttons, radio outputs, telemetry simulator, trainer simulator, debug output, um, low Lewis scripts. One that I like to actually open is debug output, and I like to expand it and just keep it on the screen. Um, you can close it, but you can open it as, as you so see fit. I, I can't fit it on the screen here, but what I, what I like to do is... is Put it off to my second monitor while I have the radio simulator on my front screen so that way when things are loading and whatnot I could actually see what the radio is doing in the background and I'll, I'll show you more on that as we get into things. So in the folder that you copied from the radio go into scripts and telemetry and these scripts here are the scripts that are going to be loaded by the simulator. So if you go into your model and go to the display page which is the last page, page 14, and go ahead and go to one of the screens. I'm going to screen 4 here because I already have some screens set up. And go ahead and select script um, for one of the screens. And when you select on the script to be chosen, you're going to see the two that are available um, in the telemetry screen, at least on my radio. Those are the two that I have available. So what we can do now that we know where the radio is reading the telemetry scripts from, 
since it's simulating and not actually from the radio, we're going to go ahead and create a new Lua script. So right click in the folder, go new, text document. I'm going to go ahead and call it hello world, H-L-O-W-L-D. I'm going to delete dot txt and I'm going to call it dot lua dot lua. Um, that way the radio knows that it's a Lua script and it'll pick it up. So click on yes. Go ahead and double click on it and open it up in your text editor. I'm op I'm using Notepad++. Uh, that's my um, text editor of choice. You could use just Notepad. And I'm going to go ahead and be writing just a really quick short example of um, what you can do with the Lua script. You could do a whole lot. Um, so what I'm going to go ahead and be doing is I created a local string called my string and I created a function called init func. Um, init func is the initialization function that the Lua program uses to initialize your variables. So I'm initializing my my string variable with hello world um, and then I close it and then I'm creating a new func another function called run func which gets periodically called as the script is running and since it gets periodically called I'm adding some LCD functions in order to actually display my variable which is hello world text onto the screen then I'm go ahead and I'm ending my script with the return run and init which is required in order for the Lua script to run now everything that I just typed here and everything that can be um, called and <coughs> used is in the OpenTX reference guide. You can actually Google it um, and find it and download it. Um, I will go ahead and reference the link in the description so then you don't have to do that. But just in case you don't want to come back to my video, you can go ahead and just Google OpenTX 2.2 Lua reference guide. Go to <coughs> the first description, hopefully download the PDF. Once you download it, then you go go ahead and open it up and read it um, for yourself. Um, table of contents, it tells you all the functions and everything that can actually be used and called. Um, the One of the main things that we will be using here is, and what we're writing is telemetry. So we're going to go to tele telemetry scripts. You'll read here, you can read about the lifetime of the telemetry, how often it gets called, you know, some just some small things. An example, there's the init funk that I was talking about, the run funk and the return. Um, some brief notes about exactly what they do. Um, and then for the LCD screen outputs that I was discussing, you can actually go down to the LCD functions. And here you can actually see everything that's available for the LCD to be writing to the screen. It shows you some parameters, the LCD widths and heights that each remote has the LCD clear to in order for you to clear the screen if you want to load other text um, and just some examples there so that's where I pulled this example from um, just go ahead and read the reference guide you know <clears throat> see what's available to you um, so what we're gonna do with our script is we're gonna go ahead and save it just to verify also that it's in your telemetry script with the other scripts going to go back to the simulator and go to the display screen, page 14. We're going to go up to screen 4, which is what I'm using, and we're going to select script. And in the available options, we now see Hello World. Um, with the Turan, with OpenTX 2.20 and on, um, the max characters is 6, so that's why I did H-L-O-W-L-D. Um, so now that we have our script selected, I'm going to go ahead and go back to the main screen and hold down the page button to loop through my screens and there we go, hello world, uh, fantastic. So with it now displaying on the screen and now we got it successfully to display, I'm going to go ahead and show you that you can actually change the code on the fly and load it um, and see your changes visibly. So I'm going to change the Y axis to 20. I'm going to go back to the simulator. I'm going to click on this button right here, which is Reload Lua Environment on the Simulated Radio. Go ahead and click on that, and now you'll see your Hello World has moved. I'm going to change this to 30, and each time you change it, don't forget to save the script. Reload it. So now I'm going to change it to 40. Control S to save. Reload. 
and now it moves down. So I'm going to progressively keep increasing my Y value. It doesn't necessarily have to be on the tenths place. It could be on the ones place, so it's 51, 52, 53. Um, but as you can see here, when I change it to 60, my string is now showing off screen. So 50 is more or less the max. I'm going to go ahead and choose 30 as that's more or less middle of the screen. Now on my X axis, I'm going to do 50. See where that puts us. Maybe it might put us mid screen and slightly before mid screen. Uh, it's a good location. What I like to go ahead and do now is show you how to simulate telemetry uh, in the event that in your Lua script you are pulling telemetry from your quad or from your plane or whatnot, whatever you're writing your telemetry here, Lua script for. Um, so in the original script that I created, it was called LipoLog. Um, I had to rename it to Lipo. Um, due to the constraint in 2.21 where the Lua script name had to be six characters or less. So I'm going to go ahead and go up here and choose my the new name, which is Lipo. And now that I chose it, um, it should now be available in my telemetry screen. So if I go back to my main screen and then pan, um, page through my telemetry my screens, I can now see my lipo log. So this is lipo log, uh, my lipo pack. You could name your packs. You could write your flight log to the file. So if we view the logs, I can see that I have five logs, my lipo pack name, my flight time, my VFAST. Um, all this right here is the simulated, though simulated that I created on the on the simulator. So I'm going to go ahead and erase um, some of those logs. I'll just keep one, and I'm going to go ahead and simulate some data just to show you. So if you click on the telemetry simulator, you're going to be pop, um, have this pop up. In the VFAST, I went ahead and entered 16.4 on the cells. I went ahead and did 4, and then all of the 4 cells, I did 4.2. You're going to click on Simulate button, and these are all the available telemetries if, if you need for some reason. And I'm going to write the file. And, oh no, something happened. So this is a perfect time to show you exactly how the debugger can be of help here. So if I come down here in the debugger and I look, I see here where I'm actually getting an error saying not found. So it looks like my battery battery critical wave file is not found in the location that it should be in. So let's go ahead and look through those files. So we look at the location, it sounds en bat crit wave. So let's go back to our folder. Let's go into sounds en and yep, I don't see bat crit it's not in there and since battery critical wave is not in there that's where why we are getting I am getting the not found um, so you can see here it's it's actually loading over and over and over and that's probably because that's that audio file that I told you it's that it's complains um, since I loaded the telemetry um, so we're just gonna go ahead and close that but that still doesn't explain why I'm getting this. Ah, okay. I know what it is. So, in my script, looking at line 697, line 697 is load record positions. And with the record positions, it's going to be the telemetry data. Um, unfortunately, I don't know why the debug output is not actually displaying the fact that it's having a hard time loading that data. Um, usually debugger is a little bit better on this so when I'm looking at this and even when I reload the Lua script I'm still not seeing the error in here. Usually you can see the error but I don't know why it's not loading this time. So if I actually go and I see what's, what got loaded um, I see that this value, the float value here, is just way too much for the variable that I created to actually save 
So I'm going to go ahead and shorten this. So instead of being this long, um, I'll probably need to fix it actually in, in, in the actual script. I'm going to short, shorten it to 0.39. So now when I reload the telemetry script, there it is. Yay. So let's go to flight log and there's all the simulated data. Now what you guys are seeing on the screen um, is different from what I actually entered it in the simulator. Um, the reason being is because I was messing around with this uh, earlier and I actually saved the simulated data that you actually see on the, on the simulated Tyrannus. Um, and then I changed it to 420. So don't be concerned too much too concerned with that. That's just you know I changed values between cha changing screens and trying to figure this out. Um, so I apologize for that not being um, accurate. But one thing that you can actually do if you're not actually seeing um, data show up, um, if you're entering values in the simulation and it's not showing up, you can come back to the telemetry screen and just like you would with a quad. Um, or with a, a receiver, a transmitter, you can actually discover new sensors. So you'll see here when I change the VFAST 15.8, it updated automatically on this, the remote. Now the cells here where you see 16.4, it's not updating, but when I go to discover sensors, a new cells um, field gets populated and with the cells that I've entered actually on in the telemetry um, simulator. And the reason being is because I think going from 2.1 to 2.2, now it's a new value of cells. I don't know why it's, it's different, but um, it's the kind of thing that happens. But you can see here, as I'm changing the cells data, it actually updates accordingly. And there you have it, um, a brief introduction on how to set up your environment to develop for Lua scripts. Uh, I hope, surely hope it does help somebody. I know when I first started developing my first Lua script, uh, there wasn't any videos out there exactly how to set up the environment. I was very, you know, confused exactly um, where to set things up, where how to get things going. People just go straight into developing and dropping Lua scripts and whatnot. And when I first started as well, I would plug in the remote and I kept the remote plugged in. No one really ever tells you that, that you can actually unplug and turn off the radio and continue to develop on the simulator. So uh, I figured that I share that little piece of knowledge with, with somebody um, because like I said, nobody actually states that in their videos. Um, I was well unaware of it. It uh, doesn't say anywhere in the reference manual or anywhere at least where I've um, searched. And so the only thing to do now is to just copy the Lua script over to the remote, just plug it in as normal. Um, I will link again to the other videos that actually show you how to set up, like say for instance the the Lua telemetry sc um, scripts for Betaflight. Um, basically the same concept, just drop it into the telemetry folder and your Lua script should be available just as it is on the radio just as it was on the simulator so hopefully all that works so hope that gets you started um, I hope you guys and everybody out there you know benefits from this and starts writing your own Lua scripts um, for your OpenTX remote control alright happy flying